On the morning of October 7, 2023, Sabbath, and the holiday of Simchat Torah, the terrorist organization Hamas launched a surprise attack on Israel. It included both a ground and air component, with a massive and continuous barrage of rocket fire targeting large areas of Israel, especially in the south and center. Under the cover of these barrages, about 3,000 terrorists infiltrated Israeli territory on a front of about 60 kilometers, launching attacks and takeovers of IDF bases and outposts, engaging in gun battles with security forces and simultaneously infiltrating and occupying civilian communities. In this onslaught, 1,145 Israeli and foreign citizens, including women, children, and the elderly, were massacred. Many others suffered terrible atrocities, including torture, acts of abuse, amputation of limbs, rape, burning of living people, and desecration of the bodies of the dead. The attack also resulted in the kidnapping of 254 Israeli and foreign citizens, including elderly women and babies. Following the attack, the State of Israel launched a war and called it Operation Swords of Iron. On that terrible morning, the head of Hamas's military wing, Muhammad Def, announced the opening of an operation called Bul El Aqsa, or El Aqsa Flood in English. I wondered why not the Gaza Flood? What's the story behind the term El Aqsa Flood? It always seems that Islamic terrorist organizations are trying to establish some kind of connection between whatever they're doing and the heroic act of saving El Aqsa. But why? This is a question we're going to try and answer today. First, let me explain what the name El Aqsa means. It refers to a mosque building on top of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. The site of the Temple Mount itself is considered the third holiest site in Islam, referred to as the Haram el Sharif, or Most Noble Sanctuary. But the reasons for these are very hazy, and even some Muslim scholars have raised questions about the origins of this tradition. The city of Jerusalem is not mentioned by name in the Quran. So the Temple Mount compound is where the first and second Jewish Biblical temples of God stood. And the first one was built dozens of years before 621 AD. But at some point in subsequent centuries, the idea that the farthest mosque referred to in this story was on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and it became widely accepted. Thus, the first mosque on that site was built by the Muslim conquerors of Jerusalem in the early 8th century. It was built there on the ruins of a Byzantine church, deliberate demonstration of the belief that their religion supersedes the Christian and Jewish religions which had been founded in the city centuries earlier. A few decades later, the original mosque building was destroyed by an earthquake and rebuilt. The new building was destroyed by an even larger earthquake which caused massive devastation all over the region in the year 1033. It was around this time that the phrase El Aqsa is in danger became a rallying cry for Palestinian Arabs, giving them an issue to gather around and appoint to direct their collective efforts. 
it continues to serve this purpose down to the present day. And over the years, this mythical cry has been embellished to include an entire false narrative about Jewish plans to demolish the building along with the nearby Dome of the Rock and build a third temple on that site in its place. But where did this phrase even come from? Who first used it and why? The origins of this falsehood can be traced back to the days of the great Mufti Haj Amin al Husseini, who was the spiritual and political leader of the Palestinian Arab community in the 1920s and 30s. In the wake of the Arab revolt, which began in 1936 and continued until late into 1939, the British expelled the Grand Mufti. He promptly made his way to Berlin, where he was offered his services to Adolf Hitler and was instrumental in recruiting Yugoslavian Muslims to serve in the Waffen-SS and participate in the Nazi Holocaust of European Jews. But before that, as he was leading the Palestinian Arab community in the British Mandate period between the world wars, he invented many lies false narratives to get his people fired up against their Jewish neighbors. Many of those false narratives continue to be widely believed by Arabs and Muslims in Israel and around the world and have even become widespread outside the Arab and Muslim worlds. However, this hasn't stopped Hamas and the various other Islamic terrorist groups and even more moderate voices such as the Palestinian Authority from latching on to this issue to stir up opposition against Israel. As time has passed, the myth of the Jewish desire for control of an aqsa has been repeated so often that some have decided that it must be true. Serious academic studies have been conducted on the subject at major universities and think tanks across the Islamic world and even in Western countries. Religious conferences have been organized around it, and public officials in many countries have raised the issue in public discourse. In the June 1967 Six-Day War, Israel gained control of the old city of Jerusalem, including the Temple Mount. If Israel wanted to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the other historic buildings, on the Temple Mount compound to make way for a third temple, there would be no one that could stop them. Indeed, some people wanted to do just that, pointing out that Jordanians had destroyed several Jewish synagogues in the old city and built mosques on the ruins when they took over the old city and expelled the Jewish residents in 1948. Instead, Israel immediately handed over administrative control of the site to the Muslim Waq authorities in the old city of Jerusalem, under the auspices of the Jordan government. That is where things stand on the Temple Mount to this day. Despite private initiatives to take steps toward the construction of a third temple, and a vocal minority in Israel which would like to see these plans move forward. There are no plans by any government agency to change the status quo. In fact, organized Jewish prayer on the Temple Mount is against Israeli law. It is not even allowed to bring a Bible or Jewish prayer book to the Temple Mount compound. It's important to understand that the false narrative that Al-Aqsa is in danger has been weaponized to such a degree that it has grown into a global phenomenon. It has been spread through channels like Al Jazeera, used by Qatar to promote the vision of a global Muslim caliphate and the destruction of Jerusalem. This idea is also propagated in many Western countries 
due to the influx of Muslim immigrants from regions affected by Islamic terrorism in the Middle East. Israel continuously works to protect the mosques and their integrity, but perversely, it is often accused of complicity in actions intended to damage the Temple Mount mosques. Another aspect of this story is the way mosques have been utilized by terrorists over the decades to attack Israelis and Jews, as well as others who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. In 1986, near the gate of Danj, members of the Silwan squad threw grenades at Yivati soldiers from a mosque. Similar incidents occurred in 1992 and 1993 with the kidnapping and murder of three policemen and in 2008 with plans to establish infrastructure for Al-Qaeda and even shoot down the President of the United States helicopter during his visit to Jerusalem. The Temple Mount and its mosques have been used for terrorism and violence during both intifadas. While this activity wasn't coordinated with local religious authorities, the atmosphere of incitement attracted terrorist operatives. The plot of Al-Aqsa is in danger has been intertwined with the rewriting of Arab Muslim narrative about Jerusalem. This includes rewriting the history of Jerusalem to claim Arab rule thousands of years before the Israelites and denying the Jewish Zionist narrative about Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. Even some Arab Christian leaders cast their own scriptures into doubt by saying that there was never a Jewish temple in Jerusalem. These narratives contradict both historical research by scholar archaeologists and documented Muslim and Jewish history. The Al-Aqsa is in danger, resembles anti-Jewish blood labels from the Middle Ages, as it falsely accuses Israel of seeking to destroy the mosques and build the Third Temple. The perpetrators from the days of the Grand Mufti to the present day incorporate anti-Semitic elements, threats, and incitement to violence. Perhaps worst of all, it is very obvious that most of those who spread this myth know it is baseless, but they use it for personal, religious, political, financial, and of course, nationalistic purpose. It's worth remembering that over 2,000 years ago, the Greek historian Democritus composed one of the earliest blood labels against Jews, claiming they sacrificed foreigners on the altar in Jerusalem in the Temple Mount every seven years. The Al-Aqsa is in danger myth also targets the Jewish people, their religion, and their place of worship, the Temple Mount. It's simplistic, failing to differentiate between extremist plans for the Temple Mount and the Jewish people's historical and emotional connection to the holiest site in Judaism, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. It's despicable for deliberately ignoring the Jewish connection on the Temple Mount and dangerous because of the widespread belief among innocent Muslims that Al-Aqsa is indeed in danger. I'm Yair Pinto, and this has been another edition of My State. Please don't forget Jerusalem and continue to pray for this special city that I call my home. Let's spread the truth together and unite in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem.